Church. Um, this is probably the most, I haven't been to many of the other rooms, but this is probably the most decorated one. And this was because the idea is to impress. When you build an important building, you don't want it to be Bob standard. You want it to impress, be different, show people why they should come here. You know, why come here? Why not go down the road? And these facilities all attract. They attract the right people. The portraits that you can see on the walls, past and present. If you look behind you, you can see John Reynolds in the middle. And John Reynolds was really, as I say, the great administrator who made so many of the classes at the time possible. Next to him you have John Dalton. John Dalton came down from Cockermouth in the Lake District at the end of the 1700s because Manchester was such um, an innovative place and very receptive to new scientific ideas. Uh, and he was a Quaker. He was also colour blind. So on more than one occasion there's been a case of nudge, nudge, you know, he's got odd socks on. <laughs> and when he was challenged one time about this having odd socks on, he said, well, very strange, you've got an identical pair at home. <laughs> <laughs> he's said to have left his eyes to posterity. And through studying the eyes, they were able to find out which strain of colour blindness he did suffer from. And I can't remember, I'm sorry. But certainly in certain countries in Europe, uh, Italy, for example, colour blindness is still known as Daltonismo. Now, if you look up to the amazing panel in the ceiling, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's plaster work, and it's by Thomas Mewburn Crook. This represents the four seasons in the centre. You can see the Latin names on them. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And then around the edges, you've got the signs of the zodiac, and then supporting the whole ceiling, instead of having just ordinary columns, you've got these figures. And these figures are from Greek mythology. The men, the male figures, I should say, pardon, <laughs> are called Atlantides, nothing to do with Atlantis. And the women are called Karatides. And the women part, certainly, they mean, it means damned woman, <laughs> not that damned woman, but women who were damned because at the time of the wars between Greece and Persia, they supported the wrong side. And on each of them you can see a virtue above them in Latin. I'm not a Latin scholar, but even I can guess what they are, you know, justice, prudence, fidelity, uh, charity, I can't read that one, and fortitude. But they're all around. So it, it reflects what the human spirit can produce, can endure. Uh, it's very allegorical, it's very sort of in keeping with the arts and crafts movement. This is the charter when it became the Concordat of the University, which was 1905. And then this is a um, ceremonial trowel, <laughs> the usual lay of the brick. And we did have Prince Philip. Oh, yes, it's over there. Statue of the head of Prince Philip. It is, isn't it? <laughs>